Hello and welcome back to the Dungeons and Dragons Podcast UK. My name is Yasmin and I will be the DM. Hi, my name is Samantha. I play Laura Greyvale and she is a sorceress from the province of Navalia. Hello, I'm Colin and I play Quinn de Greymont, a paladin from Florban in the province of Gavany. Hi, I'm Ryan. I play Ogvar Shawfort, a goat herding, mushroom seeking ranger from Keswick. Hi, I'm Rick, and I play Otto, a spring sage from Hanwir, sworn to the land, wandering the plain and setting wrongs to right with Xersine companion Bojo. fiery foes finished off, the party picked through the remains of the kitchen chaos, finding little worth looting. The focus was now fixed on the opening in the floor at the front of the galley. Otto, still in bat form, flew down and after briefly surveying the scene, rapidly belted back up through the hole, furiously flapping in fear and baring his fangs as he unleashed a salvo of squeaking. The party were unable to fully understand, and Rowan was asked to interpret, but unfortunately, and not for the first time this trip, although he tried his best, his attempt at charades fell short of the mark, as he had everyone stumped. Eventually, it was Allura that was elected to hang herself over the hatch to have a gander at whatever grimness lurked within. And as her marvellous millinery disappointingly made its departure for the floor below, she had lingered just long enough to perceive something emanating an aura of almost pure evil. Episode 140, Vessel of Volatility. Oh, oh, oh my hat, my hat's gone. Anyway, having seen this, Alora is going to immediately move her body, shift her body back up and come and pull me back. Pull me back quick. Okay. Uh, shh, okay. Shh, shh. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, right. Goes. She's going to, as she disappears from the edge of the hole and manages to sit up, just before she loses sight of down the hole, she's going to cast Mage Armor to just quickly pick her hat up and retrieve it. Mage Armor? Uh, sorry, uh, <laughs> Mage Hand. Mage Armor. Mage Armor. <laughs> protect mage. your hat. <laughs> I'm going to protect Very my well hat at all costs. Yeah, very much. Yeah, she's going to cast Mage Hand and pick up a hat. Yeah, okay. Quickly so you, retrieve it. Yeah, you, you cast Mage Hand and your hat floats back up to you. Lovely. Right, she's going to grab it, retrieve herself from the edge of the hole completely. She's going to, uh, she'll turn to, I'm assuming everybody's sort of crowded around the hole. She's going to turn to Kieran and Ogvar, grab them with a the hand each and say, Oh my God, quick, let's get back out of this room. Quick, quickly. And she's going to go back out towards the well, towards the door of the galley that they're currently in, um, and then just indicate to them to huddle round. Um, flap over. Okay, okay. Uh, I, I, I can see what Otto is in such a twist over. There is something down there, a creature, a person. I don't know what it is. It's sat at the far end of the boat. It's sat in some kind of chair and it has the most evil, dark aura I have ever seen. Well, obviously through this eye, but I, I've never seen it. It is, it's so dark, it's almost black, this aura. Now, whatever it is down there, I can't see anything else down there, just that. But clearly our presence is already known. You'd have to be deaf not to have heard this ruckus up here. So whatever it is, I'm going to assume that it knows we're here. Rowan. She's going to recall Rowan. Rowan, come here. Immediately. What do you want to do, guys? I mean, I don't like the look of this. But we're committed. I don't see what else we can do. We've, 
you know, whatever it is, that I'm willing to bet that that's the source of the problems. Squeak. Yeah, <coughs> I, I, I'm going to assume that that's what I'm agreeing with me. Squeak. Well, um, uh, I'm a bit, but uh, we're all a bit bruised and battered, really. But I suppose if we must, we must. Well, I don't suggest that we just do this alone. Personally, I think that if anybody needs to get out of here, I take them back to the bell tower, and I think we should fetch Esther back. I think the more hands we've got, the better. Squeak. That's probably a good idea. I, mean, I don't know about a... you, but I'm. Uh... Well. I know you've taken a few hits, and oh, I, I don't feel too badly off myself, but I, I don't know. What do you think, Ogval? We, we like to know it. You, you had your head down there looking, and um, I, I trust your judgment that it's uh, something foul is down there. Trust me, whatever it is, is not good news. Did, did you, uh, did you, was there any uh, exchange of expression or any? No. No, it's got some kind of a helm on, I think. I couldn't really see a face. I, 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 it sat on a chair, so I assume it's facing me. It didn't seem to be the back of a chair. Are you sure it's not a statue? It's got an aura. So unless it's a magical statue, which is also not good news. Squeak. I see. Um, look, I, I can, I can take, I can take three people and myself back to the bell tower. The point is, I can, if, if I need to get people, if, if this goes bad and I need to get people off this, there are some things I can do, but there's a limited amount. I can, I can take three people, including my, well, four people, including myself, back off this floating thing. That's it. So anybody else that was left behind, I mean, what have we got? We've got, uh, we've got, uh, you, Kieran, we've got Eric, there's myself, there would be Esther, there's Otto, there's a bloody puppy that he's picked up, that's a creature, and there's Rowan. Bojo's so, here. Bojo's in the bell tower. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's eight people. Did you leave Murdoch behind? I haven't seen him. Right, okay, so that's eight people, but I can only get four off. Now, a couple of those have got a flying ability of their own. I can... Would, would Laura know the deck of the ship that they're on, the deck below where they would be heading to, would she know whether that is above or below the waterline? Um, okay, so you'd probably say that this, this deck below... Uh, is is going to be sitting just below the waterline, you'd say. Okay, so the deck below, by my calculation, should be just below the waterline. Which means that only creatures... With, I, I can make a hole in it to, to make another exit. I can make an exit, an instant exit, but whoever goes through there is obviously going to need to swim and you've got the onrush of water coming in. Which is going to make it very difficult to escape that way. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I think I think uh, the uh, we weren't quite uh, prepared for what what we encountered. Uh, we thought it was going to be a bit of a wrecky of the town, maybe a few zombies and stuff. Uh, but uh, we've got hellhounds. We've had. Uh, Thing flying with uh, venomous whip tails. We've had cooks that have got flames coming out their ears. And oh, and the bad news is there's at least another two of those things floating around here somewhere. Because when we landed on deck, I, I, I caught sight of three. There could oh, be yes. more. Oh yes, at the golems. What does everybody want to do? Squeak. I think. Uh... Otto. Squeak. squeak. Squeak once for yes and twice for no. Squeak. Can we do this? Squeak. Shh. And you think we should do this? Squeak. Yeah. Okay. We need to... We can't leave this thing here. Squeak, squeak. 
What do you want to do, guys? Let's attack then. Right. Who wants? To, who should I drop back? Should I take Rowan back, back. To, the, to the Belfry? Should I take? I could take several back. I can get rid of this. I can shove this puppy in the Belfry. I can. I, I can take somebody else back to the Belfry. I don't quite understand. I thought we were attacking the monster downstairs. That's what the squeaks were. Yeah, but I need to go back to get Esther, which means that I can take some people that don't. Need, some creatures that don't need to be here. I can take them back with me and leave them there. Yeah, okay. Who should I take back? Eric, what state are you in? Uh, I'm... I'm quite fine. Thank you, Miss Laura. Is anybody not fine feels that they can't do this? No, no, you don't mean. If for a penny, if for a pound. <laughs> Laura smiles at that. Um, right, I will take... I'm going to take Rowan and I'm going to take this puppy and I'll take those back to the Belfry and I'll leave them there with Bojo. I'll give them all some instructions. I'll give them instructions that if we don't make it back that they are to go back to Genrex. You're going to be treated to uh, uh, the amusing miming from a bat trying to emulate a bear walking around the ship. <laughs> you want me to bring Bojo back with me? Sweet. Okay. All right, if you're happy for that. Squeak. Right. Laura will draw a deep breath. She is going to, she's going to, she's debating whether to take Rowan back or not. She's having an, inter, she's just taking a moment to have an internal struggle as to whether to take Rowan back or not, because Rowan does have some abilities that. Right, she's going to cast Dimension Door. She's going to go back to the Belfry. Okay. And when she gets to the Belfry, she, well, she, yeah. Okay, she's going to cast Dimension Door and go back to the Belfry. Okay. So, you cast Dim Door. You step through, leaving the others on the ship alone. And you appear back in the top of the tower. Um, where you can see Esther is, uh, well, you're actually greeted with uh, a sword to the throat when you appear. Uh, as Esther, very clearly on guard, has just sprung up and, and swung for whatever's just appeared. She very quickly drops it. Oh, sorry, dearie, sorry, dearie. I thought you might have been something else. Um, apologies. Uh, where's everyone else? Uh, it's okay, Esther. Um, we've got real problems. Uh, oh potted version. We landed on the ship. We had to fight two, look like clay construct golem rock things we sunk those they're gone got rid of them we then went down to the next deck and there were these vile hounds that breathe fire just hellish fiendy creature things i don't know we managed to kill all them uh and then we wandered in through another door and there was it, it turned out to be the galley and there was there was a, an absolute rook of these creatures these red skin wing things which just went berserk anyway we've managed to deal with them but the problem is down on the next deck there is something incredibly evil i don't know what it is but my eye is telling me that that thing is pure evil and we've all taken a little bit of a battering here and there and we need help and she produces this puppy <laughs> this thing Eric's new pet. <laughs> it's kind of cute, but I can't, I can't leave. I can't have it with us. We need to just get it out of the line of fire and just leave it here. If if we leave it there, it might die anyway. She's going to pull her winter blanket out from her backpack. She's going to wrap it up in the winter blanket and she's going to kind of stick it into a corner where it might be safe and just leave it for now. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you you put the puppy down and Esther kind of gives it. Ooh, how adorable. Uh, a bit of a coo over it and it, it yips at her. Baths out a little bit with your fire. Bang, yeah. The blanket starts smoking. Mm, great. Oh, looks like I'm going to need a new blanket. Um, she's also going to pull out some sort of hard meat type, dried meat rations that she's got and just throw it down in the blanket because she doesn't know what else to do with it. But it can't, 
it can't stay in somebody's backpack. I'm assuming that's where Eric put it. Oh yeah, 100%. Yeah, because he had both backpack. hands on the door handle, didn't he? Um, so yeah, she's just going to leave that in the corner and she's going to say to Esther, are you ready to go? Are you up for this? Well, no time like the present, dearie. Bojo? Bojo? She's going to lean across and give Bojo a Bojo's room. downstairs. Oh, he, can't, downstairs? he can't climb up the stairs. Right. Uh, we need to go downstairs, Esther. So they're going to kind of clatter downstairs. Yep. Get to the bottom. Bojo, she's going to reach out and she's going to stroke him lovingly on the head and say, My friend, your master needs you. He's requested that I bring you to him. Are we good with that? I think Bojo might just gently take his very large head and rest it on your shoulder for a second. Yeah, she's going to give him a really loving fuss on the end of the nose. She's going to take the one. She's going to take his one paw, um, encourage him to sit, take his one paw, and she's going to hold Esther's hand, her spare hand that she hasn't got a sword in, um, and she is going to cast Dim Door back to the ship. Okay, so you Dim Door back to the ship. I'm assuming you're going to Dim Door back into the galley. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Cool. So in the time where she's been gone, dim doing about, what have Ogfar, Kewin, and and Kewin been doing? Um, <clears throat> I think Ogfar would turn to Kewin and go, "Well, we don't know what's down there yet, do we? Shall we have a look? You hold my legs up, put my head down, and see what's going on." Squeak, squeak. Mm. Okay. Oh, this is fun. Oh, oh. I think Otto's against that. Oh, is that in the... Sorry, you're, I'm you're in not the there. Sorry, I'm not there. Forget that. Um, yes, it's, 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 it reminds me of uh, where we used to uh, hang, hang out and pinch the pies from off the uh, the ta- tables with, with, with the kids. They used to hold me upside down by my legs, by the ankles, and lower me down to pinch the pies. You must have been a lot smaller when they did that. Oh, I was very small then. Yes, a uh, little whippersnapper. <laughs> don't, don't worry, Otto. I'm only going they, to... they only dropped me twice. <laughs> I'm going to look at them. I'm so glad that Laura's not there. It's on the tip of my tongue. I desperately want to say it. <laughs> so, Ogvar's not going to go like full torso down. He just wants to sort of have a peek and just, just get a look at you. I'm only going to. Have Put my head down there, Otto, so it's, I'm not going to go full torso. I think got as he sees you putting yourself in position, he's going to wander it. across to one of the uh, perhaps cooking counters and just headbutt it rather hard in frustration. <laughs> he can't <laughs> say anything. <laughs> okay, the uh, the counter takes two points of damage. Uh, probably <laughs> Otto does too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's all uh, I wants to do just have a little peek, see what he can. You can see. You okay, yeah. So you crane your head down and you see this exact same scene. You see this figure sat upon a throne. Uh, above him, a large, what looks to be some kind of lamp, filling the room with this crimson red glow. Um, it's obviously very, it's a very stark light. You see very, very heavy, thick shadows. Um, and it appears to be some kind of like silk or something kind of lining the room. Um, banners kind of over the top obviously like kind of some form of opulent decoration um but it looks a little tatty a little tired um a little bit decayed does it look a little bit like a throne room type thing very much so you you looking at it you obviously you can see the wooden floor of the ship and you can see the wooden sides but this is very much looks like it's been uh, you know a throne room style like this this one throne it's not at the far end of the ship it's not all the way at the other end it's probably about three quarters to two thirds mm. of the way down um, but it is the only thing in this room. Okay, with no this, tables or chairs? No tables, okay. no chairs, nothing, you know, kind of furniture-wise, which would, you know, kind of indicate... It, it, it's just simply this big throne with this figure sat upon it. Does the, does the figure look of average human size? Is it bigger? say probably a little a little on the larger end of the scale um probably more kind of q in okay. height it's still um, reasonably but still, still believably human size believably human yes yeah. it, it's not eight foot tall or ten yeah. foot tall it, it's it's that kind of human within the human size range yeah. but towards the taller end of the scale okay. uh, and again you get this feeling you can't see you know you can't make out any defined features you can't see 
you, you, you do kind of see that this is wearing this kind of mask almost over its head. Um, but you, you, can't, you can't see any eyes or facial expression, but you get the feeling that you are being watched. It's a very violating feeling. You almost, as the longer you spend kind of looking, looking around, you, it's this almost soul deep feeling where you just feel like the chills crawling up your spine. It's, it's a disgusting feeling. Okay. So, yeah, Ogbo will sort of pull himself back up and sort of, thank you for that cue in. It's a very bad, bad little look and uh, it's, a, it's a bit frightful, really. I don't know the way of putting it. And, uh, we still, we're still in like, the galley, aren't we? Mm, yeah. So there's like a bit of like sort of ritual and I can sort of like, draw on the floor what I've seen to explain to Kiwi what's down there. Um, I mean, there's enough smashed tomatoes, you could probably paint it in tomato juice. Oh, or just do it with my dagger just in the floor. Oh, yeah, yeah, just, like, just yeah, something, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. It's about this big, and uh, he's, he's well, I assume, whatever it is, is, is there. And there's, there's not a lot else going on, but um, I thought I'd put you in the picture because um, I, I, I don't know if I'll be able to hold your legs with your devil, so. Uh, but yes, this is what we've got really. Here. I do get the feeling he knows we're here, though. But he's not moving much. Oh, okay. Maybe he's on break. Yes. Uh, well, we might as well uh, just sit here and wait, then. I, well, I, I, I might as well. I'm just going to sharpen my sword. Okay. I thought he was going to go and say he's going to make himself a, a sandwich. There's <laughs> 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 uh, one thing to win. There seems to be um, a, a, a red light down there. It's, is it mounted on the wall? So does, it's. Does it's, it spell danger? <laughs> or exit? Well, yes. Can we hold it? <laughs> <laughs> it it's appears to be mounted into the throne, like so. Where oh. where you've got the, above the creature yeah, yeah. being's head, you've obviously got the chair extends upwards. It's almost like it's kind of uh, mounted okay, yeah, in. Yeah. Okay. So there's, there's, a, there's a light. The red light. And I'm, not, I'm not quite sure that's got anything to do with it, but. Um, might be worth knowing. Do you think, uh, Eric, is, could something like that be like a, a source of power or a source of evil, or do you think it's more possibly uh, the person? Uh, well, I, 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 I would say, uh, I would, I would say that it quite possibly is a bit dodgy. Um, it doesn't sound very good. Uh, generally, things which are red don't tend to be good at all. You know, like blood or cherry pies. Oh, what do you want to get cherry pies? I've got a story about cherry pies, and it's quite a tragic tale. Um. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm trying to think what that could possibly mean, but um. Anyway, uh, very bad, very very bad. Maybe a story for later. Yes. Yes, yes quite possibly. Okay. Where we are. Okay, so in the meantime, while you've been doing this, Eric has kind of made himself a bit of a clearing on a table. Um, he's taken a, a roll of parchment and he's been scribbling away into this roll of parchment. Um, he rolls it back up and, and doesn't really say much about it, um, but he's he's just been doing that. Uh, okay, so as you stand there, dagger in hand, having carved this scene into into the wooden boards. I imagine it's, it's a bit of stick figure. Oh yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and Laura, you appear back on uh, in the alley. So you all hear the sound of the dim door opening and you see Laura step through with Esther in tow and Bojo following quickly behind. Sweet. And Rowan is st <laughs> Rowan is still with her. She's decided to bring Rowan with her. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. So Bojo probably grumbles, quite happy to see you, Otto, even in your bat form. Um, and Esther, oh, hello, dearies. Oh, you're not looking too well, are you, Kieran? No, uh, we've uh, had a bit of fun, shall we say? Yeah, is oh, that what you call oh, it? Oh, uh, so, what's the plan? Well, Otto's just going to take a moment to climb up on Bojo's back and sort of nuzzle him. Uh, in <laughs> a few moments. Uh, Enjoying each other's company before things go wrong. <laughs> um, Laura would indicate to um, Esther and say, um, "Down there, down there." 
right here. She walks over to the hole. <laughs> and drops to kind of stop mid mid flow here. She drops. It's a very fluid motion. She walks over to the hole, drops to her belly, her hands grasping up the edge, simultaneously pulling herself over and flopping down so that you see her, her hips are kind of braced over the, same over the way edge I of the did. hole. Yeah. Exactly the same way, but she's she's kind of she's still holding onto herself, and it's it's very it's almost like you know she walks, dives, and whoop down the hole. It's like a fish. Um, she reappears and um, looks around. Um, yes, that's uh, that's quite something. Um, all hands on deck. <laughs> well, it's clearly aware of the fact that we're here. Oh, exactly. Oh, back upstairs. Back. All back hands upstairs. on deck. Oh. <laughs> uh, ba boom. <laughs> No, no, Kieran. I mean, we're all going to need to get on this thing. You know, all hands on deck. Um, the saying? Come on, little, little, you know that saying, surely. I, I, yes, I do, Esther. I'm just wondering how on earth the, the best approach to go down through the hole. Do we all just drop down through the hole? What, what, what do we do here? But there is a ladder, dearie. Yes, that's what I meant. Ah. Well, he's obviously not going to come to attack us straight away, because he's... I, I could, I could cast a, I, I could put an opening in the deck further back, behind, behind it, him, it, whatever it is, and we could get, I could get down that way, maybe, uh, behind it, weak. that would immediately put it into flanking. Uh, yeah, but uh, only problem with that is if. You drop down behind. You'll be by yourself. Yeah. What I'm talking about is if somebody drops down behind it, at the same time as somebody comes down, you can only face one direction at once, right? Squeak, squeak. I'll drop me behind it. Okay, okay. Squeak, squeak. squeak. That was three. Otto, I'm totally confused. I don't understand what three is. <laughs> squeak, squeak. Is that squeak. maybe? <laughs> Does anybody understand this bat? Uh, I, I stopped Rowan. when he wasn't a bat. Rowan, what is Otto saying? <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, um, what are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> I think the, the easiest thing to, to, for, the, for Otto to try and communicate this is to just gently bite the hairs on the scruff of Bojo's neck to, and sort of urge him forward a little bit, try and steer him using the, the, the scruff of his neck there to a spot approximately behind where this thing would be and then just start pouring at the ground while looking up at uh, Adora. Okay, so you're gonna, you're kind of gonna walk, walk Bojo out of the galley um, and end across. So I think if seeing Bojo's arse disappear out the door, I think you'll probably get that message pretty... <laughs> so you're suggesting I drop a bear behind it? Squeak. They do call them drop bears, don't they? That's no. That's yes. <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck me. Uh, um. Right. Okay. Well, we'd have to do this at the same time, so I'd need to go and make a hole in the deck. But you'd, I'd have, he'd have to drop down simultaneously, and somebody else up at this end. So I need to be down that end. And then I can come up and join you. Or maybe I can even fight through the hole that I make in the floor. Initially. From above. No, uh, I'll charge, whatever. Right. I suggest you lot go down the hatch. I'll go back up the other end of the boat with Bojo. We'll make a couple of holes, perhaps one above him, one behind him. Get Bojo to drop down behind him. And then that's three angles of attack, because I don't like the look of this guy. It, whatever the hell it is. Anybody else got a better idea? All by the way, Right. So, if I do a count of three, I'll have to shout a little bit, but it's not going to matter. He knows we're here anyway. Okay. On my count, 
you guys go down the hatch, I'll open up some holes in the ship, Bojo can go down and I'll try and do something from above. Okay, well, well wouldn't it be better if we, if, if we go down, because there's three of us, we won't all fit through the hatch. And then when I go, you'll, you'll, you'll hear a, a, a code word. How about, ha ha ha! And then you open up the floor. Okay, that's fine, that works for me. Right, I'll do that then. Alora will make her way about three quarters of the way back down the ship. She's gonna have to estimate roughly where he'll be. So she'll make sure she goes more than three quarters of the way back. Okay. And then she's going to wait with Bojo. She will explain to Bojo, uh, Bojo, uh, I'm gonna open a hole and I need you to jump down behind whatever is there. There's something not nice there, be careful. Mind you, uh, a great big grip uh, there. If it dropped on your head, it wouldn't be very nice. Well, I was going to say. <laughs> That's option, isn't it? It's about a ten foot drop, isn't it? So it's not huge. Twenty-five. No, the, I think the decks are about ten high, aren't they? I've got a drawing here of what Yaz gave us last time. It says twenty-five foot by fifty by one twenty. Right, so it's a twenty-five foot drop. That's huge. That's massive. That's a massive drop. I wouldn't have thought the decks the decks really that deep. Yes. Because one deck had been removed and it made a deeper hole. Top of decks, your decks have been removed, so the interior of the ship's been gutted in certain places. Okay. All right. Twenty-five foot, roughly a house. Yep. Yeah. Farm roof down. But then it's a big ship. It's a huge ship. In place at the hatch is Quinn, Ogfar, and Esther and Eric. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in place at the hole is a law or where the hole will be is Alora and Bojo. Otto, are you, go- are you over there as well? I'll stay on Bojo's back for the moment. Okay, and I'm assuming Rowan will be with you as well. Okay, so you split split the party. Oh, that sounds good. Four and four, always a good start. <laughs> okay, so you're ready to start this plan? You're happy with it? You're all happily prepped? Yes, just to clarify, it when uh, Alora starts casting her spell, uh, Otto will stop hanging on to Bojo because he's got no desire to fall down. He can raise or fly. <laughs> okay, cool. Right, so we're gonna we're gonna start. So off you go. Okay, so we all get down. Uh, I suppose I'm gonna go first, and what you two, what you three are, are down. I'll go. Aha! <laughs> <laughs> There was a signal. <laughs> oh, and don't, no. on that aha... <laughs> no, no, please no. <laughs> on that ha-ha, um, Alora will say to herself under her breath, ha-ha. And she will cast <laughs> Pass Wall on the floor. Okay, what does that do? Pass Wall is a fifth level spell and my mouse won't work. Um, <laughs> just... I need my mouse. Um, Passport is a fifth level spell, and what it does is, well, I can find the description, um, it creates passage through wooden, plaster, or stone walls, but not through metal or other harder materials. Passage is 10 feet deep, which in this case is, it's going to go through the deck. Yeah. Plus, an addi- oh. plus an additional five foot, blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> there are three caster levels above ninth, maximum of 25 feet deep, that's irrelevant. Um, Several password spells can be linked. That's it. It just it creates. It just creates a hole. It creates a hole. It creates a hole. Excellent. Okay. So yeah. Do you see the size of the hole? Hang on. The uh, five foot by eight foot opening. So that should be big enough. For big plenty enough for big enough. Yeah. Okay. So you can. I'm assuming you're not going to create it under your feet. Uh. Yeah. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, you could have made it under a throne. <laughs> Oh, I've still got another one of those. <laughs> <laughs> How deep do you want to go? <laughs> Out through the bottom of the ship. I could do that. <laughs> yeah, don't forget we are in the ship. We are in the ship, correct. I don't want to really sink yeah. it. Making, making a big hole in the bottom of it, probably not the best idea. No. Okay, so you hear the ha-ha as Kieran starts making his way down the ladder and you cast the spell. You create a hole. Okay. Yeah. 
I'm going to tap Bojo on the side and say, over to you, my friend. Okay. So I'm assuming Bojo's just going to... I shall. Yeah, I think we'll be able to see what's underneath and see roughly where we're centred. Yeah, you're, you're somewhere behind. Okay. Probably about 15 foot behind the throne. Okay, so I'm assuming Bojo's just going to go for it. I'm going to give a bit of encouragement and... Um, yeah, I think so. Can we see the floor below? Is it, okay. is it open floor? Is there anything nasty that we might land on? Nothing nasty that you could land on, no. Then, yeah, I'll encourage him to jump down and I'll follow down behind him. Okay, so Bojo jumps down. It's a 25 foot drop, so he's going to take 2d6 points of falling damage as he goes. Uh, so that's going to be 3 points of falling damage. Okay, thank you. As he hits the floor, bit of a grunt. You all feel it because he's not a light bear. <laughs> uh, Otto, you, f- Otto, you flutter through, and Laura, what are you doing? Laura is going to position herself along the hole so that she can, or maybe even just lie flat on the deck and position herself along the hole to see if she can see this dude. Yeah, you can see him. Okay, cool. And coming down the ladder, I'm assuming, Kieran, you've made it to the bottom and the other three will be starting their way down. Okay. Yeah. There is one other thing that Laura would do before she lied on the floor uh-huh. to look down. Out of um, Orland, she is going to pull, is it in Orland or her backpack, whichever it's in, she is going to pull out, there is a vial of, um, hang on, what is it? A vial of antitoxin. Okay. Which she is going to drink. Yeah, no, you can't do that at the moment. Oh, okay. Okay, so Bojo Rowan. What hit dice do Bojo and Rowan have? How many hit dice? Eight for Bojo. Okay, that's fine. When you say hit dice, do you want hit points? No, hit dice. It says hit dice, familiar basics. For the purposes of effects related to the number of hit dice, use the master's character level or the familiar's normal hit dice Okay, total. that's fine, we're good. And his hit points are one half of mine. Okay, that's, that's good, we're fine. Okay, so that's all good. And... Everyone... Can roll initiative. Boom! Make it good. Oh! <laughs> yeah, carry on. That will be a natural 20 plus 8 for a Laura for a 28. Ooh, wow. Okay, there we go. That's nice. Excellent. Good job. Usa. That's a 6 plus 2 for Cubing. 8. So 3 plus a 6 for Ogba, which is a 9. And that is a 15 plus 1 okay. for 16 for Otto. And Bojo? Oh, apologies. Let's just give you that separately. Oh, well, he rolled that one, so he'll be going last regardless. Yeah, he's got a plus two, so Excellent. three overall. That one will do it. So, Bojo has just dropped down behind the throne. Uh, with Otto, you've now taken flight, you'll be hovering somewhere above. Laura, your stomach down getting a line of sight. Kewin, you were at the bottom of the stairs, which are approximately 60 to 70 foot away, you'd say. Um, and Esther, Eric and Ogfar, you were all probably kind of hovering on the stairs. You'll, you'll be able to get downstairs on your next turn. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you all no, sorry, first up is Allura. Sorry, first in the round. Allura will um, mutter to Orland, uh, Orland, can you pass me the vial of anti- antitoxin, please? Okay, this will take up an action. Are you sure this is what you want to do? Yes. Okay, so yeah, Orland will spit out the vial of antitoxin. Great. Um, she will hold that in her hand and she is going to... She's decided that she's going to stay where she is for now. Okay. For now, yeah. Okay. She does look at her ring on in her hand on her hand, her ring of invisibility, 
and considers spinning it to find just the nearest pub because she'd rather be somewhere else, but then she just dismisses that thought. Fair enough. Okay, so, end of your turn. Up next, you hear a voice. It's unnatural. It's chilling. Foolish mortals. You tread in my domain, board my vessel. Your flesh shall feed my armies. Prepare your final words. I shall give you the grace of listening to them. The creature sat on the throne, rises. Standing tall. And immediately begins to cast. A large spectral hand shaped like a clawed and malformed kind of skeletal, taking this clawed and malformed skeletal shape materialises floats in the air next up is Esther Esther who will spend her turn getting to the bottom of the ladder um, and preparing her sword readying herself that doesn't look very good dearie okay next up Otto just to confirm what is the distance between um, me and Bojo and this creature. So about 15 foot. Okay. So you have landed behind it a little way. We're pretty close. Okay. And again, just confirming one thing. The last time we had a... When we started boarding the ship, that we've got less than an hour ago? Uh, yeah, probably. Probably been less than an hour ago now, yeah. Fantastic. Okay. I am... I've been saving a spell for a special occasion. I think this is it. I'm going to cast Bite of the Were Tiger on me as a bat. Ooh. Okay. So nice. So that will what will that do? My so my features will shift somewhat into those of a tiger. My hands, so presumably on the wings, uh, will grow sharp claws. And thick skin and striped fur of a tiger begins to hit my body. Uh, mechanically, nice. this gives me a plus twelve enhancement bonus to my strength. Plus four enhancement to my dex, plus six to my con, and a plus five enhancement bonus to my natural armour. It grants two claw attacks, and my mouth turns into that of a tiger, granting a, a bigger bite attack. Um, and this will last for around a level, this is a fifth level spell. Okay, nice, excellent. Yeah, so you kind of morph and shift into a tiger bat. Yep. Oh. It's a thing, it is now. <laughs> okay, so is that is that all you're doing in your turn? Or are you taking any further action? I shall just urge uh, Bojo to get ready. Uh, I think I'll just be flapping around in a circle at the moment. Okay. So, next up is... Eric. So. <laughs> Eric, reaching the bottom of the ladder takes this scroll that he's written on. You saw him writing, didn't really know what he was doing. Um, and he throws it towards this creature. Read it! And that's the end of his turn. Alora's just going to have surprised eyes at this. <laughs> okay. So, next up is Opa. Um, yeah, I'll go and reach the bottom of the uh, <clears throat> of the ladder and sort of shimmy across a little bit to make space for anybody else coming down. Um, while he's doing that, he just sees the, the the sheet of paper flying across the air, so he watches it as it arcs across and sort of. Well, probably yeah, just be like, uh, okay. Uh, I'll go, I'll go. <laughs> put it under. I suggest you take him up on his offer. <laughs> <laughs> you just go in with it. 
<laughs> okay. Not quite sure what's going on, but he's going to go with it. Okay, so at the end of your turn. Um, yeah, just knock it's a the arrow. Is like a like an air, paper aeroplane type thing? No, it's a scroll. Oh, it's just it's, it's, it's like a small scroll. It's, he's, he's kind of he lobbed it like a baton. Yeah, oh, it's, okay. it's gone spiralling end over yeah, end. Yeah. So, yeah, just knock an arrow and... Yeah. Okay, excellent. So, Kewin. Uh, so, how far are you? What are you about? You're about 60 to 70 foot, so, you know. Is it 100 foot? 120 foot. 125 foot. 125 foot. But the terrain's not in the middle. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, uh, turn to uh, his pack, take out his detoxin. Okay. Um, then he's just going to slowly advance and go, uh, well, I, I, I don't know about um, being all this uh, unfriendly. Uh, you say it's your ship. Um, well, we apologise, but uh, we only came to have a look, and uh, we were attacked. So, well, you, you, you're the uh, you, you're the unpleasant one, not us. <laughs> He's so proper, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you almost get this feeling again. You can't see an expression, but you you almost all get this kind of feeling of incredulity um, from that statement. Um, but yeah, no, so you advance up and you, you kind of enter into this pool of blood red light and it's 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 a very dramatic setting because Kewin is now, you know, he's almost backlit, so you can see his form as this kind of black shadow shrouded by red light with silver glinting off the edges of him. It's very, very dramatic. Um okay, so is that the end of your turn, Kewin? Yes. Okay. So next up is Bojo. Um, What's Bojo doing? Bojo will probably just sit there del- and delay for the moment because he hasn't. There's no sign of anything actually attacking for the second. Okay, so is he going to prep an action or? No, he, he, he'll sit. Li- well, yeah, he'll literally just delay action and stop there. Okay, so he's at the bottom of the round, so That's, there's no advantage there, is there? How about you just ready as an action? If he gets attacked, he attacks back. Okay, cool. So top of round. Um, Elora, so this, this room, you've now got this creature is now stood up. You can see he's wearing dark robes. Um, they're made even kind of, they look even darker because this red light is providing this, uh, this glow and this filter to the entire room. They look opulent. They look like they were once very, very rich clothing. Um, even if the design and the pattern and the cut is quite alien to you, they still look very very rich and opulent however they do look moth bitten worn tattered decayed um, and you can see that obviously he's cast this spell this giant skeletal hand has formed um, this bit clawed and misshapen malformed looking uh, hand just floating in the air made out of obviously energies um, and in his other hand which kind of rests by his side you can see what appears to be a weapon of some sort. Um, he holds the handle and it has long chains uh, with three vicious looking skull shaped heads attached to the bottom. What are you doing? I think she can see how this is going to go. So she's going to reach her hand forward and she's going to utter she's not going to shout it but she's going to utter ignis and she's going to cast a lightning bolt directly into the back of this creature okay. if he's holding metal weapons i think she would choose lightning bolt um, okay because they it melts metals with a low melting point as well okay and let me see is that a electricity type oh it is oh yeah Okay, you cast lightning bolt. Yeah, okay, cast lightning bolt. The bolt strikes out a sharp crack of blue amidst this red hue. Striking. It's a reflex save for half. Striking this being in the back. Yeah. You see the spell dance over its body, jumping from point of metal to point of metal. And the spell crackles out. Creature laughs. Oh dear. 
Are you trying to tickle me, mage? I'm not a mage. I think that would be her only retort, because she'd be busy processing going, oh, shit. Okay, cool. End of your turn? Well, shit. Um, I, th- I think she. W- I think at that point she would probably move and drop down. Okay, you're dropping down. Trying to bounce off the back of Bojo for some kind of uh, fall protection. You're dropping onto Bojo. Well, no, okay, I probably wouldn't injure the bear. Okay. Yeah, I'll just, she'll, she'll hang, she'll hang, <laughs> swing down, hang. She's about five and a half foot, something like that, five foot six, and then she would just drop the rest of the way and attempt to jump the rest of the way. Okay, so you unfortunately take six points of fall damage yeah. as you, you drop down. Uh, your legs go numb, you get that kind of pins and needles and your ligaments and tendons are kind of twanging. <laughs> Um, yeah, she's going to grunt very slightly as she hits the ground. But. Okay. So, next up, this creature, almost bemusedly looking at the piece of paper that has landed. It's, it was a pretty decent toss. It's landed actually quite near his feet. He takes half a step forward and picks it up, and twirls it amongst. Them bony skeletal fingers. <laughs> what is this? Your last will and testament. <laughs> and he unrolls the scroll. Please tell me it's got a glyph of explosion on it. Reading the contents. Which promptly, bang, someone roll me 66. Eighteen. Okay, which promptly deals eighteen points of force damage as the paper explodes into his face. The paper itself kind of shrivels and burns up. You see it char and disintegrate, um, floating away. And this force has knocked this creature's head back, um, forcing him to take half a step back and brace his his leg against his, the, the, the seat of his throne. It's almost this kind of moment of, of poignant silence before he growls. It's this deep, bassy sound, this, you know, anger. Pure, undiluted anger. At having been caught out by something so, so measly and so foolish. Um, he tosses the smoking remains of the scroll to the side and sends this skeletal hand towards Eric. So he rolls to hit with a plus two, a 12, with a 14 plus two. Sit for 16, he will hit Eric. Eric has a chance to negate this with a fortitude saving throw. Come on, Eric. Eric is not going to make the DC with a rolled four. So he fails the saving throw. So Eric will be okay. So Eric is now fatigued. You almost see the energy being sucked out of him, drawn out of him. Uh, he appears pale, drawn, and shaky. Um, although triumphant in his victory, I suppose. Um, then this little, this spectral hand returns to the creature. Okay, so next up is Esther. Esther, who will advance up 30 foot, um, kind of matching you, but towards the one side of it, towards the right-hand side, Kewin, um, just so she's kind of there with you, ready to provide that support. Okay, so Otto, you're up next. So I'm going to urge now Bojo to attack. I'm going to take a moment to fly around the head of this thing. And yes, I know that will provoking attack opportunity, just relying on my glowing armour and my speed to try and pull me through. Okay, so you're going to provoke an attack of opportunity, so we'll deal with that first. So it is going to attempt to hit you with the flail attack plus five. Uh, with a nat one, it's not going to manage it. <laughs> um, it goes to lift the flail up, but having stepped back and being pushed back by this force, it's perhaps stood 
Uh, it's moved its legs with chains with flail, and as it tries to lift the flail up, it realises it's entangled and it can't get that flail up in time. Um, so you'll be fine for the attack of opportunity. Um, so what, what was the action you tried to take, Cyric? I'm then just going to bite it once it once it's after it's attacked. So I'm going to make sure I'm, I'm in another position so someone else can flank if they want to. Okay, so roll to hit. That's probably going to miss. Uh, that is a seven on the dice plus fifteen for the bite. That's twenty-two. Will hit. Wait. Hey. We'll take it. Yeah. So, damage wise, that, that is uh, 4 on the dice, it's 2d6 plus 10, so 14 damage. 14 points of damage, nice, okay. And, helps. having sunk my teeth into its leg, I'm going to shake it about and try and trip this thing as a free action. Okay, uh, so is that a reflex or is that. Make a. Uh, Trip attack would normally provoke an attack of opportunity. Obviously, unless he's got multiple, we've got that out of the way. Uh, then it's a strength check opposed against its strength or dexterity check. Okay, it's dex or dex, whichever it chooses, yeah? Yeah, so on my end, that's a 14 on the dice. That's a current strength of 27, so that's plus 8. So I've got 22 on that one as well. Okay, rolled a 13, so it's you're definitely going to trip it, yeah. Fantastic. That will be my turn done. Yeah, okay, so yeah, you, you yank in its leg and it's, it, its leg just goes from under it, it drops down to a knee. Um, it's, it's been tripped, so it's going to have to spend an action to stand up, I believe. Yep, absolutely. Okay, excellent. Plus it's, it's, it's a flat-footed now, isn't it? Yes. If it wasn't before. Yeah. Okay, so is that the end of your turn? It certainly is. Okay, excellent. So, next up is... Eric. So Eric is going to spend this turn just recovering. He's going to step back, he's going to take a breath. Um, he's obviously, he's not an, as an accomplished fighter as you guys are. Um, so he's just going to kind of back away for a second and just catch his breath so he can recover from this um, exertion that he's just experienced. Um, okay, so Ogvar, you're up next. Okay, um, Ogvar will, is everyone else's moving up as well? Ogvar will move up with them, he'd move his 10 foot um, just to keep a little bit of distance and um, yeah seeing that, um, that uh, Otto has managed to trip over he'll, he'll take advantage of that and try and um, fire a arrow skirmish attack please okay is this creature by any chance either undead or human yes which one uh, so it is a undead okay that's cool Right, you go then. So, we will go for a... Do I have flanking on the shot or not? Uh, you won't have flanking. Um, okay. Actually... Yes, you will have flanking. Okay. Uh, I didn't roll very well. I rolled a three, but that's going to be... Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18... 19 to hit. 19 will hit. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so that will be with skirmish damage. That's going to be d8, 3d6. Okay, so that's going to be for uh, 7, 12, 15, 20, 24, 25 points of damage, please. Oh, that's nasty. Yes. Okay. Go on. Like yeah, I mean that is a hell of a blow. Um, as it's down on one knee and, and you know, kind of in this moment of vulnerability, yeah, you just pop off an arrow and it, it hits something pretty vital. Oh, it's, it's a it's a solid hit. Is that the end of your turn? Uh yes please. Okay. Kewin, you're up next. Uh what's a Kewin try to <laughs> reason with it? Uh, no, Kieran's going to use his last smite, but he's going to charge. And okay. That's all of his, what it's gone then. So okay, go for it. Charge and smite. And misses. Oh. 
that one. Oh no, oh, my god, what a time. Yeah, no, so you, you charge up to it, but you probably chip over its flail as well. <laughs> Um, and, and although you, you take the swing and you right yourself, you're, you've been put off enough balance that your swing goes wide and you just clatter against the floor. I mean, you leave a decent gouge in the floor, um, but no, you don't hit it and you're now stood right next to it. The rapid reconnaissance revealed something deeply sinister on the next deck down. Now, it was with grim concern gripping the party that Allura was sent back to the bell tower to gather Esther in an attempt to bolster defences. It was decided that a deed must be done, and settling on a strategy, the friends put their best foot forwards, seeking to acquire an early advantage. Some sorcery afforded surprise from the aft, while the paladin presented a distraction at the prow, and thus the evil entity was engaged. The wicked warmonger delivered a declaration. Eric, on the other hand, delivered a banger of a letter, conveying his utter displeasure at the unsavoury situation they now found themselves in. As the sound of fighting diminishes and the camera fades to black, we impatiently await the drama on deck to continue next time in episode 141. And trust us, you absolutely do not want to miss it. Hey, you made it this far, so lend us your ears for a moment longer if you will. Firstly, we are most humbled that you are enjoying our yarn and the crew thank you from the bottom of their hearts for your patronage. Producing this podcast is incredibly hard work and as such, if you would like to support us, there are a few ways in which you could really make a difference. Sharing links to friends and family helps to spread the word so others like you can find us and in turn they too can enjoy the show. Equally helpful is leaving a five-star review on Spotify and any other streaming services, which will help us immensely. Or, if you feel you could go that extra mile and contribute a few coppers to keep our creative juices flowing, you can hop on over to our Buy Me A Coffee page or drop us an email. We would all be immensely grateful for your support in any form. Lastly, we invite you to visit our website, where you will find information on our campaign from backstories to settings. Join our Facebook group or follow us on Twitter. All the links are in our episode bios. Don't forget to smash the subscribe and download buttons so you never miss the next episode. See you all again next week, folks.